29th of June 2023. A brother and I had a an excellent morning, um, late morning through to sort of mid afternoon, uh, about four hours in all just in the city centre of Norwich, UK, doing some mundane things, but walking and talking between us and engaging with various uh, people and taking opportunities to have conversations with people, whether they were saved or not saved. So, Father, Lord God, we pray for all the people that were spoken to today, even this evening, Lord, that every seed sown, we know, Lord, that we trust you to water those seeds, to enable those seeds to germinate. And Father, enable us, my brother and I, to be able to submit one to another out of reverence for you, Jesus, so that, Lord, you can use us in the unity of the Holy Spirit in Christ, Father, according to your will. And Lord, we both understood today was absolutely a brilliant time. And we engaged with various people, Lord, including uh, one man we'd never met before who joined us on a table and he was known to the person we were uh, talking with about you Jesus and this uh, other party turned up another man and he sat with us because he knew the person we were talking to about you Lord and it turned out that he was under that spirit of the false Christ, testifying about a false version of Christ and eventually he said something as if it was from Jesus himself but of course it was a false prophecy because it didn't line up with scripture. So Lord we hand this man over to you and we ask you, Jesus, to speak to him tonight and to pour out your Holy Spirit on him to enable him to have dreams and visions to show him the reality of the error of his thinking and obviously what came out of his mouth was a false prophecy quoting what he thought that you, Jesus, would say today about those times and both my brother and I knew it was a false prophecy from that false Christ spirit that you talked about Jesus. So Father we commit these people into your hands the man who is a genuine inquirer he said of this conversation with this other man it was all over his head he didn't understand it which Lord was just as well because this other man was coming across in a false way a false teacher error biblical error and of course he was giving us a false prophecy of what you he claimed you would be saying today about those times. And Lord, you closed down that conversation very quickly. You moved the subject on to something else and the conversation closed. And Lord, you told us to leave at that point to avoid any sense of argument or contention with him because Lord Jesus we know that one of the prevailing spirits that disrupt the life of your people 
is an argumentative spirit. And ultimately, Jesus, we know we cannot argue with the devil. We cannot argue with demons. We cannot argue with Pharisees who are the sons of the devil. And we have to shake the dust of our feet against those who will not listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying according to Scripture. And clearly this man was of that type of person. He was right. His interpretation of the Bible was right according to him. And according to us two brothers, we knew without even consulting each other, this man was not in the Holy Spirit. He was not born of you, Jesus. And it was like a lesson for us to understand what it is to meet that spirit of a false Christ. So, Father, I want to thank you this evening that on my journeys this evening to a supermarket, my, one of my regular visits in the evening, to pick up bargains that I discovered a, a brother I knew from 30 years ago, Christian brother, obviously, and uh, he was sitting with his wife. We got into a conversation and we all agreed again with the biblical definition of marriage. And it is, it's a long sentence now for me to describe every uh, biblical marriage as a Christ-centered biblical marriage in Christ on the foundation who is Christ, with the cornerstone who is Christ, with the door and the capstone being Christ. And the biblical marriage is based on Scripture as Christ loves his church Husband, love your wife. And of course, I went through the, I, th I went through this with this uh, couple in Christ, married couple in Christ, and of course they understood it and they agreed with no question, no argument. And Lord, you are blessing obedience. And those of us who are living according to Scripture in a biblical marriage in Christ or a biblical a relationship in Christ, a biblical couple in Christ, or biblical partnership in Christ, where it's not a marriage, but it's a, a working together of two and three in a partnership according to your call on our life, Jesus, according to the will of God the Father. And so, Father, we I asked this couple to hold hands and I prayed for them as they held hands that their love for each other would increase and the world around them would see that as, as old as they are, doesn't matter what age, but in their maturity years, holding hands in public, people will see that here is a couple who've been married for many decades in a biblical marriage from the start to the finish that they are one in Christ, that the two have been made one in Christ. And I prayed for them tonight, Lord, that the, the light of Jesus, your light, Jesus, would, would shine out of their lives and that, that they would have um, appointments with people um, sitting alongside them um, wherever they sit, in a cafe or tonight they were sitting outside the supermarket on a table, having their coffee together, that, Lord, you would bring people alongside other tables and that there will be opportunities for them to engage with uh, couples or single people outside um, uh, or, or next to the table where they're sitting and that they would engage them in conversations about anything in particular, looking for opportunities to bring the gospel into the conversations. So, Father, I want to thank you for both of them. 
I thank you for my brother, Lord, who I've known for decades. I've always known him to be a brother. Tonight, Lord, by your spirit, we became friends in Christ. And the affirmation of biblical marriages in, in Christ is a sign for this world of what a true marriage is ordained by God. And Lord, you know, my brother and I this morning bumped into a minister in the city and I asked him that question about the blessing of same-sex couples. And we had that conversation that according to scripture, you, Lord God, will not bless sin, sinful relationships, sinful courtships, sinful couplings. And Lord, we spoke about scripture and I prayed for him and I told him, once you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, you will understand exactly what we're talking about. And no one will have to teach you because you'll know according to scripture. God only blesses obedience. God cannot bless disobedience. And we talked about scriptures. He had his scriptures, his opinions, his interpretation. And I said, no. And I corrected him. And I left it with him to read Deuteronomy 28 where it says very clearly, Lord, that you will bless obedience and disobedience is a sin. And I didn't spell it out for him, but I left him with that to look up. So, Father, we pray for him tonight, that he will come to understand what a biblical marriage in Christ is. And the definition is, I have to spell it out, a naturally born man of God in Christ, married to a naturally born woman of God in Christ, with the cornerstone who is Christ, the foundation who is Christ, the door and the capstone is Christ, and that marriage is filled with the Spirit of God and the presence of God, 24-7, 365, 366 on a leap year. Every day of salvation here on in, we are called by God to live holy living lives according to the Holy Spirit, according to Scripture, repenting as necessary. Romans 8 verse 1. There is no condemnation for us who are in Christ Jesus, who do not live according to sinful nature, but we do live according to the Holy Spirit. And God will not lead us to sin. That's a given. It's an obvious statement. God will not tempt us to go into sin. Quite the reverse. God is not leading us into temptation, but he is delivering us from evil. Once we submit to him, we submit to God and resist the devil. Submit to God and resist the devil. Be as shrewd as the serpent, gentle as the dove. The Holy Spirit is leading us ever onwards in Christ, heavenwards in Christ, upwards in Christ. And if you imagine a curve going from the bottom to the top of a graph, of course, those who are not in Christ, they are degenerate, reprobate, unregenerated minds, and they are going in the opposite direction.
everybody today had a choice. I say had a choice in, in the UK. It's early evening, the sun is setting, and soon it'll be dark. Technically the end of today. And the night has come. And there have been people all over the world given a last chance today to, to submit to God and to accept that Jesus died for them. Whatever religion, it doesn't matter. This evening, in the right context, in, an, in, in another supermarket, there, there was a queue for me. And I let this woman go in front of me and she was um, pleased with the offer, but said, no, no, you go. And I insisted, no, you go. Foreign lady from a foreign religion, without explaining too much, I insisted. I said, no, no, you go. It's manners. We have manners. Women go first all the time after you and so she accepted it graciously and we talked a little bit and she's a student studying a certain subject so we talked about that subject and it was just a conversation about education and she's a student and of course because she was from a certain religion and being a woman, I was very careful to say not too much. But the ice was broken with her. She processed her purchases, paid and left. I then did the same. And when I got out of that supermarket, she was standing outside. I went, oh, it's you. And she smiled. The ice was broken, and I said, your Isa, our Jesus, our Jesus, my Jesus, died for me, paid the price for me and my sins. And I gave a short testimony how my life had gone wrong. And of course, we're talking about a religion that is uh, legalistically, if you like, very moral, very law-abiding. And of course, they don't really understand the decadent West that I grew up in and I went wrong in and I did wrong things, including the drinking. And in my short testimony, I testified. But my Jesus died for me, gave his life for me and my sin. And he, he gave me another chance 39 years ago. And the truth of my testimony has power over the enemy. Not the woman. Don't know her. I don't know her personally. But we know the scripture is clear. The blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony about the blood of the Lamb and salvation through Christ, that has power over the enemy. And of course, the enemy has deluded all sorts of people who are rejecting the truth about the true Jesus. All the false religions, the, the denomination that's now split about blessing same-sex couplings, that is the work of the enemy as well. So everybody not in Christ is literally, figuratively, spiritually not in Christ, meaning outside Christ. Everybody. Those in Christ, we are called to go and sin no more. We are called to live by the Holy Spirit, not by our sinful nature, not by our flesh, not by the old man, not by the old habits of what we used to do, what we used to think, what we used to eat, what we used to drink. 
We're not called to be like we were, but we are born again. Every day, we are changing from one degree of glory to another, to another, to another, to another, one day of salvation at a time. So tonight, Father, we commit our spirit into your hands individually, together as your children, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us another day of salvation and our future is in your hands, Father, in Christ and in the Holy Spirit. I pray, we pray for all our brethren out there who are likewise in the same genuine true Jesus Christ and the same Holy Spirit who are under your will, Father, over all. Ephesians 4, 5 and 6. Luke 9, 62. Philippians 3. Isaiah 43, 18 to 21. The past is finished. Tomorrow hasn't happened. Today is today. And it's for each of us to hear what the Spirit is saying today, while it's today. So I'll leave you with that thought. The sun is going down here in the UK. And of course, do not let the sun go down on your anger. Keep short accounts and forgive everybody. And then you'll know you're forgiven. And even forgive yourself because that is a releasing thing as well. Because you've got to love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you don't forgive yourself, how can you forgive your neighbor? Final note, don't be angry with your brother. God has told you many times, don't say you love him, the God you cannot see, and you're angry with your brother who you can see because you either love your brother or you're angry with your brother. So if you love God, repent of any anger against your brother, anybody, before the sun goes down. Get it dealt with before you go to sleep. One day of salvation at a time. So, Trevor's not with me tomorrow or Saturday. He's back with me on Tuesday, God willing. Pray. I've reached out to another brother for tomorrow morning. Pray that he can come and we can do the usual, reaching out with the love of God to whosoever. God bless you. Keep in touch through the comments and uh, let's keep praying for each other. God bless you.